Welcome back to On Base, live in your Bleach Report app. I am your host, Mookie Betts, and today we have a very special guest, a really good buddy of mine, Kinley's. I call him Kinley's because he's got an S on the last S name. S and everything. <laughs> Kinley's Jansen. Uh, yeah. Four-time All-Star. First, I want to say you're a four-time All-Star, yeah. two-time NL Reliever of the Year, two-time two time saves, lead, saves leader in the NL. And what I think the most important thing is the 2020 World Series champion. You know, yeah. that's that's that was a dope time. That was a very dope time. But we'll get into that. But before we get into that, uh-huh. I want to check in because your boy, you know, he been down for a little bit. I've been been home. I'll be watching that. I man. know, and and I've been bored at home, guys. But uh, everything is going good. Rehab's going good. I'm just trying to get my grip strength back. And I think uh, once I can get my grip strength back. I'll be able to uh, start to swing the bat and then hopefully uh, get back in the games. But we'll 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 see how that goes. Anyways, that's enough about me. Let's get into some stuff. Um, how you feeling? Everything good? I feel great, man. First of all, I say nice to see you again, bro. Good, to so see you. good of to course, see you, man. It's been awesome to and you're be home. around you. Yeah, at my house. So I finally got got get you here to get I to know, my house. Right? You know? So, <laughs> it's been, a, it's you been know, maybe we should do this more often, you know, so you can come over this site, you know. But <laughs> it's beautiful. It's yeah, beautiful. It's you beautiful, got home, yeah. man. The gardens, got the pool in the yeah, back, you got everything. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful scenery. Yeah. It's a super, super dope house, bro. Yeah. So I want to get into uh a game I play on here. It's called on base and off base. On base, off base, okay. Whether you're in or out. Okay. All right? You would try polar pasta at Coors Field. Polar pasta is a food. Mm-hmm. Would you try polar? Have you heard of polar pasta? No, I never hear about okay. that. Okay. So let me tell you what it yeah. is, and I want to know if you're in or out. Polar pasta is vanilla ice cream with donut holes, strawberry syrup, and mint. And it looks like pasta. Would you try that, in or out? I would say out, man. I could, I couldn't be further. Look, there it is, right there. Uh, yeah, I, I, no, there it is. no, that, I'm out. Of course, yeah. Sorry, guys. First of all, you're in the high, high altitude, and then on, <laughs> on top of that, having that, no, <laughs> that's a no, bad combination. Not. No, no, that's the bad Royals, the Royals have this. It's like this, this taco. It's a, yeah. it's a, it's filled with meat. I, I, I don't know exactly what it is, uh-huh. but I'm probably out on that as well. San Diego, though. There's a taco for for the Royals. I think I'm out on that. I think I'm out on that as well. You see, um, I think by watching the sausage might make me get get into it. You know what I'm saying? So that's some island stuff, though, huh? I, I love sausage sometimes, man. And uh, we're gonna I might going. have a little bite on that here. one. So okay, <laughs> um, um, my the Padres, mm-hmm. their stadium's food, awesome. Yeah, and the Dodgers just put in um, new food, which looks pretty good. I haven't tried it, but. I don't know. Whatever. So let's get to the next point. You would rather close out the WBC title game over a World Series game seven. Which Never. one would you rather do? I think I, I definitely would love to close uh, game seven World Series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's so. The, but 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 to you though, uh-huh. being from the Netherlands, Curacao, yeah. playing when you play in the WBC, what is that like? How does that? I mean, it it, it's, it's great, man. It's great to be around my boys. You know, we grown up playing um, with each other. And playing for your country is, is unbelievable. Mm-hmm. But I think dreaming big, uh, a kid from Curacao tried to make it, you know, from my island, tried to make it here uh, in the major league. That's a dream come true. And to be playing the World Series, uh, I think, you know, it's no better level to be than in that, it's, than it's, that. It's in that World so Series. So you played, so a lot of the guys from the Curacao's, from the islands, I'm sorry. Yeah. Do you guys all play together growing up? Oh, yeah. We played together growing up against oh, each wow. other growing okay. up. So, okay. um, yeah. So, that that is definitely feel like a family reunion. So, it's the bond is, is yeah, really strong. Bond. Yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's why every time you go, if you see someone on another team, you make sure you go holler at them and you speak uh, Papiamento or yes. one of the, all, all of the guys from the all Netherlands them, speak yeah. four languages. We, we all speak four languages. So, which, yeah. how do you know which one to choose? You just I talk. think I think it's just Papiamento will show up. Oh, okay. You know, I think moved. if it's someone from the Dutch, from Netherlands, definitely the English will kick in now because oh, okay. the Dutch is okay. not as strong no more. Like yeah. sometimes I start speaking it then, you know, English get into it in between. So, <laughs> oh, and so then they're like, all right, just, you know, <laughs> just I'm like, English. speak Dutch and I speak English, okay. you know, so yeah. <laughs> All yeah. right. Uh, what about this? 
More ballparks should implement a toilet row. A row of toilets. There's a minor league team that did it. I'm in on it. You think so? You don't have to get up. <laughs> That's crazy. The whole game, you can eat, do whatever you want. You don't have to get up. Look, there you go right there. You see the toilets? How did he do that, though? I don't know. Damn, like it's no know, privacy no more, huh? You don't have to do... No, there ain't no privacy, no. Mm -mm. Yeah, I mean, that's the I mean, world we live know. in now, so... Yeah, I mean... I'm in. I mean, yeah, but then, good Lord. <laughs> How about if you have to do number three, though? You know what I'm saying? If you got to do number especially, three, you Especially when you dehydrated. You, you know, that number one is smelling with plus the number two. I, I think it's a bad... Look, I know, but... It's a bad vibe at the stadium. I don't right? even know what number three is, but if you got to do that, you should definitely get up. Yeah. <laughs> Number three is one plus two, right? So, yeah. <laughs> All right. So what about this? The Boston accent is the most unique accent. Yes. You, you're on base on that. I'm on base I with agree. that. I think as soon as you hear that accent, you immediately know they're from Boston. They're from Boston. Yeah. And ha have, have you went anywhere outside and, and heard the accent and asked them, are you from Boston? Have you heard any? Have you asked anybody? That before? no, but I I'll be paying attention lately. The okay. last two years that I'm playing there, that the accent is so much different. Yeah, you know, hanging around is it in hard the city. To listen to? Not hard to listen to. I'm sorry, hard to understand. Sometimes it yeah. can be when they go fast. Yeah, but when they're when they're really mad, they go yeah, yeah, Boston. yeah. But you know, like oh, Boston had a different accent. So. Yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah they do. I, and I New York, like you know, yeah, the, New York the too. Yeah. yeah, there's a difference yeah. between the New York and Boston. Those are the the two I think are the, yeah. the most distinct. You know, mm -hmm. so all right, so. All star break over with. We're back. Yeah. Got a game tonight. How was your break, bro? What'd you do? Man, my break was great, man. I mean, I had my artist was out here. We're doing video project and stuff like that. Um, your I spent artist. A, yeah, my artist. Yeah, I got oh. the label now. Yeah. Oh, that, yeah. that's why all the, the, the instruments are in here. The instruments are in here. Yeah, you got that's a my label. passion. Okay, I'll be tell me them. about the label. How did this come about? So it's basically grown up a kid, from, you know, like in my, with my family. Um, you know, we either do two things. We either do um, sport or we do music. And mm -hmm. I, cho I choose the right one. You know, I think mm -hmm. I choose the right one still. Yeah. Um, but, you know, like, just go play, like, bass or whatever. Or, like, uh, my cousins sing. They play guitar. Like, like everybody, you know. So, um, you grown up in that. You know, I have my rest in peace uncle now, my late great uncle. Super unbelievable on bass. And... Always was inspired me to play bass, play bass, play bass. And when he passed, that's when I kind of like got, you know, tight and you realize, you know, now that he's gone, now you want to, you know, learn mm -hmm. it. And, mm -hmm. you know, I just start being more involved in music and stuff like that. And now I opened up my label. So now. So I, what was the yeah. plans when you decided to open up a label? Like, are you trying to make, do something huge or something small? Or it just start small, right? Start. And then let it be, you know, let it be big, you know, mm -hmm. so. Um, I think it's just the passion, right? The passion in it. And if you do it right, you know, you put the right people around you um, to protect you and doing it right will be great. So um, we're having a blast. We have our first release. It was pretty good like a month, a month ago, three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, so now we're working on another project to get out like next month. So um, it's going well. You may not know this, but I requested. Yeah. From our travel secretary, Scott, mm -hmm. who you know, obviously. Yeah. Scott's. I, I That's called I call Scott yeah. <laughs> and I requested to always be on a different floor than you. And you know why? It's because I know, I know why. Yeah. <laughs> that bass. Because was I didn't know better. Yeah. Yeah. It, was it was like a, from two, three two, in the morning. Two, three in the morning. I'm, I'm yeah, playing dude, that thing, dude, you know? I'm like, oh my gosh, Kinley's go to. So sleep, now I kind of I kind of switch it now. So I, you don't, if I, I just carry my bass now, I carry my laptop. Now I have my interface. Okay. So I, you know, process everything in the computer. I had it in my headphones, so I don't oh, bug so, nobody. Okay, no more. okay. So man. I don't have, yeah, I don't Ooh, walk with my money to it no more. Yeah. Was, I mean, like, hey, you trust me. Dogging me. Trust me. Being with the Braves and being with the um, <laughs> Boston guys, too, they put me all the way, you know, at the <laughs> okay, end. So, okay, I'm yeah. good. I, Thank you guys for getting that hand. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So tell me about this, which is really cool. The Red Sox have a, a docuseries going yeah. on. Tell me about that. I mean, I know that the, they're following you guys. Are you a fan of it? Not a fan of it? Are they in the space? Kind of not in the space as much. What? Tell me, like, how does that? Well, work? to be honest with you, man, to me, 
I can see how it comes. It's, it's going to be better for the fans. Fans will love to have it. You know, I think um, us as a players, especially, you know, I think the young guys will probably get much better with it. Mm-hmm. But for a guy like me being in the league for a while, sometimes, especially what I do for, you know, yeah, you know, the, the either we're going to save the game or you're going to yeah, blow it yeah. and then they're going to no criticize in between. you. Yeah. So I got to be especially on top of my game. So for me, it's just... I don't mind it, but also they are in my space. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So especially when I go in the bullpen and I have to be fully locked in because mm-hmm. crazy stuff does happen in the game. And you can ask everybody, you will tell everybody how hard the last three out is. So mm-hmm. um, for me, for them to be in the bullpen, I kind of didn't want it and they're not doing that. But being around, yes, I don't mind it either. And it, and it's cool. You feel like it's it's a really, it's a good thing. I think it's good for baseball, honestly. I it's think. probably it's completely different because the the era you came up in, cameras at the field. Yeah, oh, man, no, no chance. No, like no, exactly. You don't even have so your that, phone out. Exactly, yeah. like you know what I'm saying. So, I think because of that, I think um, it might be a little difficult for me. Like a few other guys, I don't want to say their names, but a few guys do well with it too. Mm-hmm, you know, like. Mm-hmm. The like a guy like Kristen Casas will be unbelievable for it. But he so came up. He came. He just came up. Yeah. When the, the time. So so I mean, it, it, you don't think it, it? Obviously, it hasn't affected you guys. You guys have been playing pretty no, well. No, I, I mean it doesn't affect me either. They just know when they see me in the gym getting ready, <laughs> no, they just they get, get out. out. But it hasn't affected the team as a whole. You guys have been no, playing it doesn't well. affect the team. I don't think it did affect the team. So and they're doing cool. a pretty good job with that also too. And plus AC is controlling that yeah, also I was gonna say, too. AC's been, you know, awesome. Unbelievable. Sure. What's that. it like playing for him? Man, the best. I mean, I've been fortunate to be playing with a lot of great manager, mm-hmm. you know, um, from Joe Torrey to Don Manley to Dave Roberts. Mm-hmm. To Snit with the Braves, but AC is just you know. It's just me. a certain feel and a certain confidence he puts in exactly, you without, without exactly. Even like it's trying. just he knows, you know, from him being a player also too, and yeah. you know, I think that make it so much better. Yeah. So tell me about this, being that we both have played in LA mm-hmm. and both have played in Boston. Tell me about the differences. I mean. Um, they both have their own special, unique place to me. So I love playing with both organizations. Right. Both of them is to me top organizations and fan base. You could talk about both of them have their, you know, unique place. So, um, what about the fan? The difference in the fans? I think the fans, both of them are hardcore, but it's just I feel like in Boston. It's more of a sports town. Okay. So how though? Because LA has LA has a lot of things, but LA is LA too. LA have a lot of things around LA also has too. It's like the entertainment and entertainment, all, those things and all that stuff outside. going on. But Dodger fans are Dodger fans right. also too. They're I mean, hardcore. They are they are the best fans also right. too. That right. you know, you can see them travel with you yeah. guys. I mean, that's that's stuff that I see with the Yankees series. Yeah. How they dominate, you yeah. know. But Boston town. does as well. I would say Boston does that same thing too. I would say the biggest difference for me mm-hmm. is like I would say there are Lakers fans that may not be Dodger fans, or Dodgers fans that may not be Lakers fans, that may not be Rams fans, mm-hmm. that may be Chargers fans. Like you know, they kind of. Exactly because around. you have all the Dodger fans or the Raiders fans, right? Which I, is in which Vegas, is that. But in Boston. You're a Celtics fan. You're a Patriots. You're a Patriots fan. You're a Bruins. You're a Bruins fan. And you're a Red Sox. And you're a Red Sox fan. That's it. it. That's what I'm saying. That's why and I say it. It's like more of a sport town. Yeah. Like you see yeah. how it's connected they are. It's just one. It's just you one. Know, one team. It's exactly. And they go hard. They let and you know. when you play good, it's like, you know, you're... But when you play bad and you've been... One thing I learned about them, if you've been accountable... Cool. They got your back, mm-hmm. no matter what. You yeah. know, they give you chance. But if you get excuses, then you're gonna get killed. Then you're, yeah, you're out. And, and they yeah. know they're yeah, they're, they know. they're sports fans. They're they know when, exactly. what good what good plays are, what mm-hmm. not good plays are. They know what hustle is. They know all that stuff. So yeah. okay, tell me about this. Two really good food cities. I think L.A. is better, just because L.A. is probably 
LA and New York, I think, are the best food cities. But anyway, that's besides the point. What's one of your favorite spots in Boston? Because Boston is a really good food city. Man, Ape and Lewis. I love eating at Ape and Lewis. Um, there's few, a few places out there that I gotta say though, the clam chowder. I don't think anybody is fire. Can and throw I don't even like clam, clam chowder. chowder. Yeah, I didn't even like I love clam, clam chowder, chowder. and I saying? just ate it because it's good. It's like it's in I the think water. Seafood I guess I don't overall, know. I think. I will give Boston seafood. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. I agree. I mean, it's fresh up there. I mean, it's fresh. It, it's, it's dope. You I'll know, say, steaks here in LA, LA have yeah, some dope yeah, steak spots. Yeah. yeah. They, 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 I mean, LA is just, they got everything. Yeah. They LA got, got everything. everything, man. I mean, this you is ever try? You ever tried buttermilk and bourbon? No. You should try it. It's in Boston. In Boston. And they know. They know. Those are my mm-hmm. folks over there. And uh, it's bomb. So you, you, you should try it. No, for sure. And uh, okay, so. Let's pause. We got a video here. Hey, y'all. I'm Abby, the producer of On Base. I've been following along in the chat. I know you want to hear about All Star, but we've got something fun planned for you. Bleach Report and Geico were on the ground in Texas and asked a fun question. Roll the clip. Extra innings, tie game. Which All Star do you want at the plate? Marcus Simeon. I got to go with Marcus Simeon. Charles Hernandez. Oh, my gosh. Aaron Judge. Give me Shohei Otani. Woo, yeah. I got to go, Gunner. You got to go with your best player, man. I'm saying out there. Always. Corey Seager. I want Ozuna at the plate. I want my Braves. I'd say Juan Soto. Jaron Duran. So, the last guy, your guy Duran, he won the MVP. The MVP of the All Star game, a two run Jimmy. Mm hmm. How was that watching him? I mean, I know. Uh, Starting off, it was a little rocky for him. And Mm -hmm. then I don't know Mm -hmm. how much growth you've seen, but I'm sure you've heard a lot, probably talked to AC about his growth. And now he's won MVPs in the All-Star game. He's playing really well in the season. Tell me about him. I think Jaron, man, I think he just sparked the fire with the team. So when when he goes, we all go. Mm -hmm. It's just the same thing like when I see with you, like 2020. Oh, thanks, bro. It's just like, you know, when you go – Everybody goes. So um, that's the guy I'm seeing that is the future of Boston. And, you know, whenever we play good, man, when he's on base and he, first of all, every time he just put the ball in play, he just busts his butt mm-hmm, all the time. Mm-hmm. And you need guys like that. You need high energy exactly, guys. Exactly, high energy. Just and like he that. started to be vocal too. That's the one thing that impressed me too. Like when the Yankees came in town the first time and we lost that game, and he just came on and say after them, like mm-hmm. we get them the next two. And I'm like, yeah. ooh, like I like that. When I hear that, I'm like, ooh, let me see that's how good. are they gonna react about it. That's not, that's and it kind of fired me up too, because then that second day, that's the day that I call AC down, like, get me in in the eighth to save that game. And you know, it's just like we all motivated, and you could tell that a young guy like that, how he's pushing the team also too, and try to be a leader on the team also too. That's that's it's, huge. it's, it's unbelievable. That's like huge. you can see the growth of him that he's he want he wants it he wants to be that guy he wants to be the guy who you know be the leader in the clubhouse and all mm-hmm. that stuff too and he's been playing great man defensively offensively you know he's get been, on the base yeah, they're yeah, running awesome so well and, and ac probably gives him the space to do that as well the, the space and the confidence that's the thing that's why I'm, that's well. what i'm saying about ac is like one of the best so it's just how he just that those guys get it you know you just give him plenty of space to do whatever they want to and also he know when he needs to step in also too to tie tie things up right, you know yep. what i'm saying so that's one thing i like about to that point i know that question was asked and there was a lot of answers in there sure show hey teo i don't even <clears throat> remember all the other names mm-hmm. there was one name that was not mentioned that i would want up in that situation and that is fredder freeman Fred- fredder freeman he comes through at all costs, anytime there's a man in scoring position with two outs. But anyways. But the thing is, is like, you know, that's the thing, man. Like, he's been good for so long. And people don't understand nothing for Freddie. Like, he's the one. He's an old school hitter. The, I say a professional hitter. He's a professional You don't hitter. see guys like that who can set hitters and pitchers up yep. or, you know, work the counts in any way. So, yeah. So, so uh, let me ask this. Who? Professional hitters. Yeah. Professional pitcher. Yeah. Especially you. Yeah. Who is someone you hate? Now, I ain't going to say hate facing, but like in through your whole career, like when he got in the box, ah, oh, I do not want to face this guy. Who is someone? Man, 
I got to think a little bit about it. Mm. Martin Prado was one of the guys. Martin Prado. I think he got like four homers against me. <laughs> like, he's wow. the guy that is just like, oh, Lord. Like, okay. In any situation, just, I just do, I don't want to face him. I just like, yeah, I just put him in the base. And it's and, just because whatever you threw, he was always on? He was always on. He just, just stopped that cutter. Like, Really? He's the guy that, and sometimes I, that's why you got four homers off me too, because it's like, I feel like I'm challenging him all the time. But oh, then okay. it's like, all right. It's, and he kept clipping you. Clipping me. It's all right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's go all the way back to Young Kinley's from Curacao. Mm-hmm. How did you get into baseball? I think I, I had two older brothers. Okay. And watching them play, um, and, and go to their practice, and that's when I'm oh, like, okay. you know, okay. I want to do this. And when you started playing baseball, what position were you playing? Position that was shortstop. So you started at shortstop. Started at shortstop. Got a little older, going through high school. And yeah, I went. Yeah, catcher. And the funny thing How is, how did that happen? I don't know, man. I think that means you were. That means I'm going to assume this. You were not that good at short. I was good at short. You were good at you short. You can ask Ellington Simmons about that. Like what? I was. Yes, you. Look, I were was. You huge? We were was you on the same team. Like this? We was on the same team. Yeah. And he was not playing. He short? was the pitcher. I was the shortstop. Oh my god! And then we switched. Then we switched. I went okay. to catcher, and he went. I went to third base and first base first. And he went to short, and then I went to catcher. Okay, so you catcher. So when you started catching, you loved it. I loved it. Uh, I love it, and that's when I'm like, you know what? I want to be. I want to be this guy. I want to be. Catching. And you get a little older. You, mm-hmm. you you still hadn't pitched yet. Still haven't pitched yet. Still hadn't pitched yet. So I might pitch like a couple of games, but, but not really. It, 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 I, I hate it. So then you get drafted. Yeah, signed as a free agent. Si- or signed. Yeah, as a catcher. As a catcher. Uh huh. And you go through the minor leagues. Yeah. And you're catching the whole time. Your yeah, whole time. And then you play in the WBC yeah. as a catcher. How was that? 2009. So I think, yeah, everybody, like, Curacao, like, they know that probably I was the best catcher at that time. And I have great arm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I know how to call games also, too. And that's why they chose me, to just be the catcher. And they know that, you know, I can be really good at defense, but my offense is not as great. But, you know, I can do some great stuff about it. Yeah, look at that. Young Kenley's. Right Young there. Kenley's. That's, the that's, knees, the boy, that's the one thing. That's the one thing. That's when pitching starts. And I, I'm going to tell you a story. Mm. If Dijon Watson is watching this right now, in the minor leagues, so many times, like, get your butt up and throw the ball from, you know, like, oh, stop okay. throwing from your knees. And then he started telling me, like, I'm going to find you. I'm going to find you. I'm going to find you. From throwing by. From, from just, it's just back in the days, you know. Back in the days, it was like that. So, and I just keep continuing to throw from my knees and get guys out. I oh, think he probably really? might be laughing okay, about that, too. Okay. Was it, was it just hard to get up? Because you're, you're a big no, body, I think, I think when I see, like, like one time, like, Reggie Abercrombie, I remember that in AAA. Like, you know, he used to play with the Dodgers back then. Then he was with the Astros at that time. And he got just a good jump. You know, and I saw that, and it's like I have no no, no other chance but going for my knees, and it just happened. It just and happened. Then, then like have it. halfway, they're waiting for him, and then after the game, they just hand it to me, like mm. give it, like, don't you ever do that, no more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so how did pitching become become a thing? Then, like, well, tell me about that. Dijon Watson too. You know, um, he was our farm director at that time, um, and he just told me that hey, like you know, he could see the future in me as a reliever in Major League in a couple of years. And I'm like, Dijon, ain't no way I'm going to, I never pitch. How am I going to be in the big leagues in a couple of years? You know, so I didn't believe that. And, you know, but great credit to him, man. He saw it. He saw it. Um, people around him saw it. You know, Logan White was, you know, with the Dodgers at that time too. He saw it. How long did it take you to uh, mentally say, okay, I'm doing this? Like, or were you, was there a time where you were like, you know what, I want to um, go so back So they was kind of telling me that, that whole 2009. And then I think in 2009, Dijon fly to Albuquerque. He was in AAA. And he's like, time, it's time starts now. Like, I want you to get on the mound. And that's when I kind of resist him a little bit. Tell him like, no, like, I want my release, this and that. And, you know, he dropped the suspension on me. And then he's like, Kelly, listen, just think about it. And then, yeah, I called my family and all that stuff. You know, we talk about it. And my dad really convinced me. He's like, son, I always want you to be a pitcher. Oh, I'm like, wow. Like, yeah, I pitched a little <laughs> bit when I was a kid, but man, okay. You didn't know this? Didn't so know he this. waited all this time to tell you that? Yeah, I always okay. want you to be a pitcher. Okay, cool. And that's when I went back that same night to the, like, all right, 
And then I told him, like, if this doesn't work, can I at least get a chance at sketching? But, you know, never look back, man. I throw That year, I'm not supposed to pitch in the season. So I went back to high A with Charlie Huff to learn how to pitch. Mm. And then my first bullpen, Charlie Huff saw it. He immediately called Dijon. Dijon fly the next bullpen and watch me. And then they're like, no, put him against hitters. Mm. And then carving those hitters with only fastball. They're like, no, put them against our best hitters, carving them. And mm-hmm. then they're like, no, put them in the game. So that year I throw 11 innings, got protected on the 40 men. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's it. It's 11 innings. 11 just innings. carving everybody up. 11 innings, 19 strikeouts. And then, and then you go, you go, you, you play how many seasons with the Dodgers? Uh, 12, 12, 12, years, seasons, 12, 12, seasons, 12, 12 yeah. seasons with the Dodgers. Yeah, so I, and I, I, you have... Four, over 400 saves. Over 400 saves now. And so tell me your your pregame ritual because for position players and pitchers, mm-hmm. we know, but nobody has said it as a closer. So let's hear it. So it kind of changed now. Um, before, I used to do a lot of running. Like you remember? Yep. Go out there, younger now. But now I feel like at the older age now, I'm doing more stretching and more core exercises. Um, and also, I'm still doing my running. Then I play catch. And then now I'm lifting in the first inning. Oh, you're lifting. So I'm lifting yeah. weight in the first inning, do my core exercises, lifting weights, do med balls. So the first inning until the third inning, I'm lifting weights. And then in the fourth and fifth, I'm basically doing stretching. Like stretching, um, chiropractor, doing my, you know, like line my neck, you know, mm-hmm. open up my T-spine and all that stuff. And then in the s- bottom of the six to seven innings, I'm going out of the bullpen now. Oh, okay. So okay. that's how it kind of changed now. Like okay. with time, it kind of changed. But before then, it was more, you know, my routine was more, especially with the Dodgers, with Mac. I was constantly running. We was constantly working out, lifting weight. And we were stretching in the first inning mm-hmm. with Travis Smith. Yep. And then I was going out. So that was my routine back then to now. It kind of shift a little bit more that I feel like, you know, this is making me better right and now. Yeah, to, to that point, I think you come out and said you feel more dominant this year. And you think it's because of the routine? or It's because. It's crazy because I changed that routine this year. I put this routine because I feel like, when I lift before bad in practice, right? Like, then I have too much downtime, I feel like. Mm. Then, you know, I'm not as, you know, like you're lose. not moving. Yeah, because once you cool off, especially it's, it's now, hard. Like, it's I hard. Feel I cool it's off, hard. it's hard to get it cranking back. And, and especially AC let me do whatever I want to yeah. over there, too. And, you know, we, us as a reliever, we don't stretch. We don't have a, a, a reliever stretch. Mm-hmm. Everybody just do their thing inside, and we just go outside and play catch. And then I can go outside and play catch whenever. So then when I play catch, so I always delay my workout. So I play catch on a later basis, and then, you know, I work out on a later basis. So then I'm So once you're in up. motion, you kind of stay yeah. in motion. I'm staying in motion all the time. So tell me this. <laughs> Boom. Final out in the in the bottom of the eighth, going mm-hmm. to the top of the ninth. You're at home. Yeah, and the lights go low, and your song goes on. What's going through your mind then? What's going through my mind? It's just locked in. I think it, it just locked me in. I think, I think it's already started when I when the phone get called, mm-hmm. you know, or even before that. You, you see a situation. See the situation is coming, and then you slowly get into it, and then it really get into it when you start warming up. That's when you really have to shut down everything, narrow your focus, and just don't think about anything. So you don't, you don't, when the lights go off or, or anything, I'm already, you don't get I'm like already the, gone. Like, you don't get like the butterflies or anything? Or are they? I do. Okay. It depends who we play sometimes also, oh, too. Oh, wow. Okay, okay, okay. I get more butterflies or not. Like, we play the Yankees, and I'm- Yeah, because it's a big game. It is. It's exactly the big rival. I love it. You know, I'm I'm glad to experience both the rival. You did it, too. Mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. um. When you say that back then, I'm like, okay. And then when I experience it, yeah, I'm like, now you know what I'm saying. I'm like, now I know what Mookie's yeah, saying. So now you know what I'm saying. It's 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 great, man. But I feel like with this team also too right now, it, they just give me butterflies, man. The way how they play. Oh, really? And it have okay. sometimes when your teammates are playing good, mm-hmm. and 
it just you feed off of it. Right. And sometimes when we are, this also feed me off when I see my 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 boys like my offense. We call it the offense is really scrapping that day to just mm-hmm. put one or two runs. It's like all right, this is the day you have to get it done for them. Because so what, so when that happens, right? And because you don't. You don't want to add pressure to yourself, right? You it's don't want pressure. to say, but what do you, what do you... But that also yeah. lifts me up. Oh, that that makes you... Because I'm seeing the situation. I'm seeing that, man, y'all facing a tough pitching today. So, like, you know, or when you guys coming from the behind. Like, I'm seeing that those, like, you feed off of it easily. Because you, it's just like my mindset. It's like, if you get this one for them, now they're on the roll. Like, mm-hmm. we, we dug this one out. Now, you know... You, it's like we all feed off from each other. That's mm-hmm. how I feel like about it. So I do want to ask you a question about 2020. I remember that year for you was tough. Was a tough year, mm-hmm. and I remember everyone wanting to help because everyone loves you, right? Mm-hmm. But from my perspective, I think it was something that you just had to work on yourself. Yeah, hundred percent. And so, what was it that mindset? You were, yeah, what was it that like, mentally? What, I think it's just, you know, I call it traumatic event. So it started since 2017, you know, that we collapsed in the, mm-hmm. not say collapsed in the World Series, but, you know, we lost that World Series, you know, that game too that, you know, um, I give up that homer. Mm-hmm. And then you guys was, it was impossible to beat mm-hmm. 20, uh, 2018. But then I give up a couple of homers there, you know, and, is also let the outside noise, you know, that's when I really, because my whole career I was cruising, right. you know, everybody's like, oh, can they, can they? Mm-hmm. But then you deal with the outside noise that, you know, like you say, that's when I have to deal with all the stuff. And basically 2020, I, it was just a failure. Like I just mentally failed it. Like there's nothing wrong with me, but just mentally, I mm-hmm. feel like. So then, like you say, I had to go get help and I'm open about it. And you know, that's when I went get help, and you know, I feel like my career take off after that. So, what did what 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 did that help teach you? So, right now, it's just all those stuff are noise. So you can't worry about noise. You can't worry about people's opinion. You know, you know who you are, mm-hmm. truly who you are, and I feel like I'm on. I'm right now. I feel like I'm the most dominant closer that done it for the last fifteen years. And you feel like. Now, because your stuff's not different. No. You just feel like now your mental is different, which is making your stuff because probably I don't, better. Yeah, because I don't let outside noise come in inside no more. Yeah. And then sometimes we all have this belief in your mind. Those are thoughts, you know, like we're going to have thousands of thoughts a day. And it's noise, you know what I'm saying? So... Those are the things that you just put it on side and you just meditate and you f- keep working on your for- focus, keep working on your breathing. Yeah. And, you know, like, I don't care what people think about me no more. I don't care what opinion you, I know who I am. So what did you, because so, one thing for me, yeah. when it comes to outside noises, the more that I tried to block the outside noise, for me was worse. It was almost like, I honestly let it come in one ear and go. Yeah. Let it come in one ear and go. But if I was trying to block it, I was trying to block it. Then I was like, "Well, let, let me let me hear it so I can block it." You but know that's not that's, that's it. not what I'm doing either. Right? You know what okay. I'm saying I'm doing just like you're doing. So I call those clouds, mm-hmm. right? So they're coming. You just let the breeze keep pushing let it. Keep going. It's just a cloud keep mm-hmm. coming here. You're not letting it stay here and have thunderstorms and 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 wind mm-hmm. like crushing your whole paradise. No, just keep going. You know what I'm saying? Yep. That's how I. And that's what you do with your breathing exercise. Okay, you are aware, you accept it, mm-hmm. that moment. Okay, why am I having these thoughts? I'm not okay. It's okay yep. to not be okay. It's okay. Yep. Now deal with it. You know what yep. I'm saying? Now do your, you have all your tools. You know, I call it a tools box. And then you, you know, masterpiece that and just, mm-hmm. that's why you call it the mastermind. You know what yep. I'm saying? Like you keep developing, keep working on it. You know, I think, for me, ninety percent is gonna be mental. Mm-hmm. I feel I like at this at, at this time, like yes, my stuff is still gonna be my stuff. So if mentally I'm okay, I think you know everybody's gonna have a tough time when I'm when I'm get on the mound. That's exactly. how I feel like. And and 
our hitting coach, Aaron Bates, he told me at the beginning of the season this year when I moved to shortstop, and I told him, I was like, but as in, it, right before, it was it was in Korea, and right before the game, I was like, Bates, man, I'm nervous. Like, I, I'm nervous going out there and playing short. I'd never done it. Yeah. And he was like, you know, your confidence is going to come in your preparation. Yeah. And so I was like, wow, that makes sense. So if I prepare and I'm confident in my preparation during the game, are bad thoughts going to come? Sure. They always do. But you just you just let them come and you let them go yeah. because my my confidence is not on those thoughts. It's not built in those thoughts. Mm -hmm. It's built in the preparation I did two hours prior to the game. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so I feel like that's one thing. That, what about for you? Is that That's the same thing. And that's why I say drive slow. I Me, mean, I remember with Travis Smith, we used to do that because I was getting my therapist already was helping me drive slow. So that's the thing that when those bad thoughts comes and, you know, especially you being the short or me pitching, you know, Oh, I can't mess up. Now you're already speeding up. Yep. You're already passing already, the red light. Yep. So guess what? The ball will find you at mm -hmm. that moment. And guess what's going to happen? You know, for me too, like, oh, I can't mess up this game today. It's one run lead. Guess what? It's going to be a runner second yep. with no outs. Now now what? Now what? Yep. And, and instead, instead, it's like, all right, I can't. If that I can't mess up thought comes, it's like, I can't mess up. Why did I think right, about now, it? Yeah. It, it, or uh, for me, it's like, Okay, I can't mess up through my brain. Okay, now what pitch is coming? Exactly. You know, instead of I like, can't mess up. Nah, I don't think they can't mess up. Mm -hmm. You can't, don't think that. Now you just wasted five seconds telling yourself, don't think, don't mess up. Now the ball's coming. Exactly. And at that moment, if I do ever think about it on the, on the, on the, on the mound, it's just a thought. Yep. Let it go. It's just a thought. Just let it go. And especially for me as a pitcher, man, it's just, I feel like it's just a poker game, especially in the ninth inning. If y'all spell blood... I'm done. Mm -hmm. You know, so no matter what, if I don't have my best pitch that day, I can't show you guys that. Right. Yeah. Hell because yeah. you guys are too good to see mm -hmm. stuff like that. And then guess what's going to happen? I'm going to leave one ball and you guys not going to miss. Mm -hmm. Like you guys are really good mistake hitters. You know, that's why yeah. I say that. Right. So yeah. and really, really good hitters sometimes get you also when you freaking make an adjustment. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, that's really really good yeah. hitters. But so you, you guys don't miss mistakes. But you can't. But you're gonna. You, you do you're miss it do sometimes. Yeah, yeah, but, but exactly. Mentally, but you just can't worry about all that. You just exactly focus on on the things. You okay, gotta so focus. I know there's something. Another thing that's really important to you that I know we can yeah. talk all day about. Yeah, basketball. Basketball. Yeah, basketball. I know you love yeah. basketball. Where'd the love from basketball come from? Growing up, man, being a huge Shaq fan, man. Oh, Shaq. Shaq, yeah. Shaquille O'Neal, yeah, with the magic. Back in the days, magic, watching him. GameStop, you know, like mm -hmm. ripping the rims. You know, yeah. I think that was the most cool things in the 90s. Kobe fan. Yeah, Kobe, Kobe fan. fan too. Yeah. Okay. The, so when I, I really become a Laker fan when Shaq got, you know, moved and come here. Um, I think it was what 96, 97, 96, yeah. So and then with young Kobe got drafted. Yep. You know, and do you, do you so you remember ninety six? Do you do you remember what what spot Kobe got picked at? <sighs> no. Okay, I don't either. So no. Uh there was twelve guys that went before Kobe. So I think Kobe was the uh thirteenth spot. Yeah. Uh, do you can you name any of the twelve in the '96 draft? Well, the Ray Allen was on the one of them. That Kevin Garnett, no. Kevin Garnett, I don't believe so. Ray Allen was in that. He was that. Allen Iverson was that year too. Yes, sir. Oh, man. Damn, you're gonna make me. Yeah. Starberry. Star. Yeah, he was one of them too. He was there. Man, some of these other names, I. Uh, but the two that stand out for me was AI and Ray Allen for sure. Eric Dampier, Dampier. Do you remember yeah, that? Name? I remember him. Uh, yeah, but I remember Eric Dampier when he, when he, on his late career when yeah. he was with Dallas. Yep, that's what I remember. That's what I remember. Um, and then Marcus Camby. Marcus Camby also too. Yeah, Marcus with the Knicks, Camby. right? And, yeah, and the nug. I remember him mostly with the, with the nuggets. nuggets. Yes, Nuggets. He got drafted, yeah. right? Yes. Um, the other names. I mean, there are 
although they are great names, not yeah. knocking them. I just, I don't yeah. know those names. So anyways, uh, we have some fan questions. Mm-hmm. We have some fan questions. It's, uh, we're going to wrap up the show. It's been uh, awesome, Kenley's. Yeah. So it has, it's always great to see you too. Always, man. Before we get there, so got a question here. That's not a question, it's a statement, but someone wants to really know about the games when you play with Anderton Simmons when you were kids. Like, was he, like, were you just way better than him? Was he better, way better than you? Anderton Both of you guys gift, were really, He was really a gifted kid. man. Really? With his hand. Even when he was a kid. Even when he was a kid. Like, I, I always remember I used to joke, and we used to call him, like, to me, I used to call him, like, oh, he's like Omar Fiskill back then. Oh, really? Okay. He just could pick it. Man. I mean, he's still. I mean, you know, he. I bet he still. But then out. I kind of, like, I was, like, two years older than him. So then, you know, we played in the preventive and coming up, and then, you know, I went to Little League. He, mm -hmm. st he stays a couple of years. Oh, okay. so. That's how it was. But, yeah, he could have picked it, man. I mean, it was him and Didi Gregorius. Oh, yeah, Didi. Yeah. Jonathan Scope. Jonathan Scope, too. So he told me, so I played Folly with him, and he told me one day that all the guys from the Netherlands in the off season, you guys all go mm -hmm. find an island or whatever you got, wherever you guys live. At the stadium, yeah. We and all you play out. soccer. Oh, they play soccer, yeah. Do you go? I went one time with them. So that like you guys just have like a pickup soccer game against they each other? They have a pickup soccer game. So I went one time with them with my team and go play um I think it was Jonathan Scope, Didi Gregorius. I don't by the way, I think one of the stories, Anderson Simmons. Mm -hmm. This is this is unbelievable. I love this kid. And sorry to tell this story, man. Anderson Simmons in the big leagues took a public bus. And come stop and you know <laughs> drop them off with his two shoes in his hand. Really, with all those millions in his account, he take a public bus and come and play <laughs> soccer game. And I'm like, really, yo, That's, like I mean, he loves soccer. Yeah. That's the love of when soccer. John, yeah, when Jonathan told me the story, I'm like, yo, like, come on, man, like <laughs> rent, rent, rent a car, bro. You you got it. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that you, was, that was that was dope, man. That it. was legendary to me. You uh, you gotta do what you gotta do. Okay, so. I got this. Another question. I'm sorry. Yeah. So you're ex you're a music exec now, yeah. and you're a man of many talents. Yeah. What else can we expect from KJ74, uh, the label? What else can we expect from the KJ74 label? I mean, right now we start with you know three genres. Right now, basically. three genres. Yeah. So are you are you playing in in any of the? I mean, the I songs could play, or? but I'm not gonna play right now. But wow. I, I, you play at I three o'clock in the morning, so what's the difference? I know, but with Icons, I did call, I, I did a recording with Icons last year on a song. Okay, on a, but this uh, so is a local song. No, I don't sing. I just you play just, bass. Just only bass. No bass. other. No other. I, I do piano once in a while. But yeah, I've heard you play the piano. Yeah. That's why I've been waiting. You. So yeah. like you, but you grew up doing that though. I was like, you took lessons. Yeah, I took lessons later. Okay. Yeah. Oh, like, later. Later now. Yeah. Oh, I thought you grew up doing it. No, 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 no. Okay, took, okay. So yeah, later. Growing up, I, took, I play a little guitar. Okay, like, okay. You know, okay, acoustic okay. guitar. But um, then I started learning piano, and then I learned bass. Yeah. Okay. So we we have three genres. We have our R&B singers going to come out from Aruba. Then we have, you know, the artists that we're working right now, Rafik, is more in the Afro pop, you know, Latin. And then we have the older um, artists that we're going to do just bachata and salsa also, too. So. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, I do want to uh, talk about this bad boy right here. Yeah. Um, what made you, is that, is that where, where she sits all the time? All the time. All the time, right there. All as soon the as you time. walk in Kinley's house. All the time. World Series trophy. World Series so trophy. So when you when we won that World Series that year, because some people call it Mickey Mouse World Series. Man, it was I hard mean, to win. I mean, everybody would have win it, right? It was hard to win. It's anything. It was harder. We, we it was no, yeah, it was no fans no, in the stands. Like, was, no motivation. We like, had for, to play baseball. You gotta play, play baseball. Like it, it was hard, hard to, to pitch. I remember, like you you get you usually get your adrenaline from your fans and all that stuff is so, so much easier playing. Yeah, I get it. Like traveling or uh, it was hard. I mean, if people say that it's the Mickey Mouse. Then why did they win it then? Yeah, um, yeah exactly. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Because exactly. we were all trying. We were all trying. You know, exactly. We were all trying. So anyways, like when you got to lift up that trophy and and I know I know it was kind of garbage because it was during COVID and some stuff happened at the end. But like how what did that mean to you? Because that was the reason for us playing. Man, like. And it took a long time. You guys 
take all the sourness away from me because how you guys, it was like a big weight coming off. And plus I was struggling that year also mm -hmm. too. And from you guys, you know, keep motivating me and, you know, keep me up. And it, it was emotional to me, I feel like. And, you know, I think probably is the most, the best thing for me still in my career mm -hmm. is, especially the Dodgers. I know, you know, what the organization means to me. It and, may, I mean, I, I know it means a lot to you and everyone yeah. in the Dodgers loves you. They, yeah. Everybody loves you. And I know, um, to your point, like, I, yeah. it, it does mean a lot uh, yeah. to you. You did a lot. You made so many memories. Memories, man. And I mean, exactly. really, all, hell, all, all, a lot of memories are... It's Dodgers, yeah, Dodgers. exactly. You so, were in a Dodger uniform. And yeah, and um, listen, man, like, things happen, and it's, it's, it's a blessing to right. just also watch, you know, play for the Braves and get to know their fans. And right. now with the Boston, it's unbelievable. The team is unbelievable. So, but like you say, yeah, it was, it's... it's Raising this trophy in 2020, and especially knowing that that 30 year was, you know, since mm -hmm. 88, you know, yeah. we finally won it, you know, and 2017 was kind of like, it's a lot of thing, a lot of emotion plays, right. you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. that's oh, when yeah. you find out about the 2017 and, and then we finally got this. All at so, same time. yeah, so on the same time, it just, yeah, it's, it's very emotional. Well, maybe one day you'll get to hold it up again. I don't know. We'll we'll see. It's, uh, yeah. You have to go through me though. You're gonna have to fight. We're gonna have to fight. We're gonna have to fight, right? right? <laughs> We're gonna do that. So, but anyways, brother, thank you for uh, coming on the show, man. Yeah. Again, it's uh, super cool uh, being finally coming to the house. Always yeah. dope seeing you, yeah. seeing the wife, seeing the kids. Yeah. Um, and you know, uh, as a Dodger, you know, uh, you mean the world to us, man. And I'm yeah, sure I appreciate I, it. I can speak to all. Of, speak for all the Dodgers fans and saying that we miss you. We love you. And uh, I don't know, man, maybe one day you may pitch for the Dodgers again. We don't know. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. But anyways, thank you yeah. guys for joining us and we'll catch you next time.